So let's uh, now start talking about our collisions. Uh, this ball right now from the previous video is just going straight down. Okay, so we, we need it to collide against the paddle or the walls or something like that, right? So let's start talking about our collisions. And we already know for a fact that the collision is going to be calculated all the time. So we can go ahead and create a stub for that right underneath this game loop. So we know we're going to need a collision. So I'm going to say private. Um, check. Oops, sorry. Check collision. Sorry, private sub. All right. So now this is where we're going to check our collision. And the first thing we're going to do is figure out how we're going to create our collision. Now, the best way I believe with WPF, not with all applications, with WPF in particular, is to use something called a visual tree helper. Now, a visual tree helper can check things that's on the screen. And it can check to see if a particular point is or an object's point is over something else. In in other words, it can check to see if an object's x and y is over another object that is visible on the screen. And it's basically a, a hit test and it brings back a result whether that's true or not. So in order to keep track of this, we want to keep track of where the ball is. So let's go ahead and give ourselves a note and we're gonna say uh, we're gonna retrieve the uh, coordinates the coordinate of the ball the ball's position so that's our little note we're going to retrieve the coordinates of the ball's position and we have to retrieve it by asking for the x and the y value of the ball. But because our ball is being driven by these the variable ball translate that we have up here. Or if it's ball translate here. And you can see here ball translate is being set to values and then we're taking ball translate and then we're giving it to the ball's render transform. Okay, so, so what, what we're trying to focus on here is what do we need to exactly track to know exactly where the ball is. And it's not the ball per se, it is what's driving the ball. And what's driving the ball is the ball translate X and the ball translate Y. So that's why we have to declare ourselves. We're going to dim ourselves a PT as point. And that point will equal a new point. And inside of that point, we're going to do ball on translate dot x and ball translate dot y. There we go. All right, so now that we have that, here is where all the magic's going to happen right here inside of the visual tree helper, that procedure or that class that we were talking about before and we can use it directly by just typing visual tree helper and then we're going to type dot hit test because that's what we want to use dot hit test inside of the hit test we're going to tell it what we want the main object to be and that's going to be the main canvas the second thing we can this parameter we don't really need so we're just going to go ahead and um, put null here or in VB that's called nothing and then we're gonna go ahead and give it a result feedback like what do we want when we get a hit what do we want to run and we're gonna put this as a new hit test result callback and then we're gonna open and close parentheses and inside of those parentheses we're gonna give it an address to a procedure that we want to run so we're gonna say address of and then I'm gonna call that my test result 
sorry, my hit test. And then I'm going to put a comma after that. And then I'm going to go ahead and instantiate a new point hit test parameter, which is this one here. So where's, oh, first let me go ahead and type it and I'll tell you what it means. So I'm going to go new point hit test parameters right there. And I'm going to give it that PT that I created. Now, this one is red because we haven't created it yet. But this is what will run whenever this point here hits anything like a rectangle or something like that, any concept of that nature on the screen. So what I need to do now is go ahead and create this. So right underneath this, I'm going to go ahead and create my public function. This one has to be a function because it returns some information. My, and it's going to be named right after this. So it's going to be named exactly the same thing. And then inside of that, I'm going to put by val. And it's going to say result. And that result will be as a hit test result. There it is. And then it's going to return a hit test result behavior. Now I can go ahead and hit enter and return. I'm going to return a hit test result behavior. And I want that to be continue. Um, <clears throat> Continue, I can explain this fairly simply by saying when a hit test happens, like a button has many different things that make up a button. Continue means don't stop at the label, don't stop at the text, don't stop at the, you know, the coloring or whatever. Go all the way through that object and tell me whether anything about that object was hit. If I didn't put continue, it'll stop at the label, let's say, of a button. And then, that, it, and then it won't even say that the button was hit, just the label of the button. So in a way, it goes all the way through the object to be able to say that anything within that object was hit. So that's why we have continue there. I'm going to hit save on this. This is going to, we're going to use this to check to see if a brick was hit. Um, we're also going to use it to check to see whether a paddle was hit. So... Let's go ahead and put that in there. All right, so what we have here inside of this procedure here is we're checking to see if the hit test result hit any visual object that's of a type rectangle. If this is true, we hit the paddle and it's going to reverse the speed. So what we're doing here is we're checking the center of the paddle because what we want to be able to do is check the, the paddle center and use that to be able to call the distance from the paddle X position and use that to angle the shot to be able to allow the ball to be angled. For instance, when the ball, here let me get uh, something here, shape ball. Here. So what we're doing is, right now, without, without this part here, without these three here, what you will see is that when the ball hits, it'll just go like this. You can't angle the ball. Basically, it's just going to go up, up, like that, right? But now what we did, because of those three lines, if we hit the ball at an angle here, it will move at a particular angle. The further away from the center we hit it, the more of an angle it's going to hit. To. So we get to close to the center, it's going to go straight. And the further we move away from the center, it's going to go at an angle. And all we need to do is alter this number to make it more or less of an angle. We can go into more detail about how this math works. 
But for right now, just understand that that's exactly what this part does. And so we put it in my hit test result. And my hit test result is constantly active because we're constantly checking it inside of this check collision uh, procedure. Now we put the check collision con procedure right here above, uh, right below uh, everything else that we were drawing. And we make sure that it's in our game loop. So now when we run it, you can see now I have my ball bounce off the paddle. But there are no walls or anything up here. So that will probably be the next thing to do is make sure I add those walls there. We'll do that in the next video.